Aloha, fellow ARC players. In this review, we'll be talking about another one of my favorite mods, the Dynamic Fence System. All right, let's go. Headshot. The Dynamic Fence System is a mod that will allow you to build four different structures which can all be unlocked once you hit level 50. Fence posts will make up the bulk of your fencing needs. Uh, there's a small gate, a large gate, and the fence controller that we'll talk more about in a minute. None of these things are super cheap to build. One fence post takes 15 metal ingots, two obsidian, and 10 stone. A small gate takes 35 metal ingots, four obsidian, and 20 stone. The large gate requires 70 metal ingots, 8 obsidian, and 20 stone, and the controller takes 20 electronics and 50 metal ingots. All of these structures act as metal structures, so they're resilient to almost every dino you come across. We're going to talk more in depth about all of these structures, so let's start with the fence post. You can set fence posts freely on the ground, and they'll connect to nearby fence posts that you place down. If the color of the fence post is blue, that means it's not close enough to another fence post to connect. And once it turns green, that means it is close enough to connect. The acceptable distance from one fence post to the next is three foundations long. If you want to place the fence posts on foundations, ceilings, or walls, you'll get snap points. You can use the Q key on your keyboard to cycle through the snap points. Alright, let's dive into the fence posts radial menu real quick and go over the notable options. The first thing on the radial menu is hide lamp. Every post you set down comes with a lamp at the top, but if you want to hide it, you can. Hide lamp is actually the default option when you approach a fence post, so you don't actually have to go into the radial menu to hide it. Next is cycle post connection. You'll want to use this if your posts aren't connecting to each other the way that you want them to. This is really only a problem if you have multiple fence posts within three foundations of each other. You can also cycle post connections to make an opening in a fence, which is nice if you don't want to use a gate for some reason. Lastly, and this goes for all the dynamic fence system structures, you can pick them up if you want to. Alright, let's talk about the gates really quick. The small fence has an opening that's three foundations wide. In the radial menu, you can choose which way the gate goes when you open it. Next, you can tell the fence if it should open automatically or manually. And lastly, you can choose how long it takes for the automatic gate to close. This is really nice for taming pens since it will automatically close after you kite a dino into it. All of this stuff applies to the large gate as well. The only difference is that the large gate has an opening of five foundations. And it has gates on both sides, so you can't choose which way the gate opens. Now, let's talk about the fence controller, and this is where it gets really cool. It does need a generator of some kind nearby, so keep that in mind. But when you go into its radial menu and choose Control All Posts in Range, it will turn the fences on. The controller has a really high range, so it's unlikely that you'd have to build multiple controllers for one base. Anyway, all the lamps on the fences and gates will turn on. They're not super bright, but it's still kind of cool. And check this out. You can set the fences to either stun or kill creatures that run into it. On kill mode, the lights going up the fence will turn red. And if you choose stun mode, those lights will turn blue. I'm sure you're thinking about all the cool ways you can use the dynamic fence system mod right now, so let me show you how I primarily use them. The first and most obvious way I use the dynamic fences is to simply create a perimeter around my base. It keeps hostile creatures out and my tamed creatures in. But it's really nice because this is a great way to essentially make a yard that's safe for your base. The second primary use I have for the dynamic fence system is to use it for taming wild dinos. This is kind of cheaty, in my opinion, and I'll admit that, 
but what you can do is simply place down posts really quick around whatever you're trying to tame. It's a little bit easier than dealing with pillars or gateways at least. You can do this while you're on a mount, so you don't have to worry about taking damage yourself. It's an even better idea to have a taming pen ready to go to kite the dino into. That way all you have to do is close it once they're in. That way you don't take as much damage as my poor wyvern does right here. Anyway, this makes taming creatures really easy, even gigas and rexes. One of the only problems with the dynamic fence system mod is that it can act glitchy on platforms. So if you wanted to use fence posts on a cat saddle, a raft, or any other type of platform, it'll probably end up getting glitched out. None of the glitches have ever been game breaking for me. I just pick up the fences and everything is cool. Anyway, that wraps up the dynamic fence system mod. Thank you to the creator of this mod, Wuzzy. I've been using this mod in all my ARC files for years now. If you want to pick up this mod for yourself, just search for Dynamic Fence System in the Steam Workshop, and it'll be the first thumbnail that comes up. If you enjoyed this mod review, please consider dropping a thumbs up on it. If you'd like to see more mod reviews and other related content for ARC, a subscription would be great. Thanks for watching, enjoy the Dynamic Fences, and Godspeed.